hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with the subject of radar systems and engineering and uh, so far in the previous uh, few videos we discussed some of the basic concepts related to radar measurement about the radar uh, equation and uh, various other things uh, basic things related to radar measurements so in this video we are going to again uh, discuss some basic concepts and basic things related to the nature of radar signals and some basic signal processing techniques which are used uh, while analyzing and processing uh, radar signals okay so basically uh, as we all know the whole system of uh, radar it involves the utilization of electromagnetic waves for the location and detection of objects located at uh, far or long distances so it involves uh, transmitting electromagnetic waves of a particular amplitude frequency phase in the direction of a target object then those signals upon striking the object they get re-radiated back towards the radar receiving antenna the receiving antenna captures a certain portion of the re-radiated signal analyzes it processes it and then extracts various information depending on uh, what requirement we have whether we want to measure the range whether we want to measure the elevation angle, azimuthal angle or Doppler shift, uh, velocity, whatever we want. So here an important thing which is involved in this whole process is the signals, electromagnetic waves. Now we all know that the electromagnetic waves they consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields which vibrate in mutually perpendicular directions and they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. So we can visualize it in the form of three coordinate axes x, y and z where x can represent electric field, y can represent magnetic field and z can represent the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave. So it can be represented by this mathematical representation okay where the different uh, symbols to represent these things okay amplitude frequency wave number and the initial phase which are the important things here and all the measurements in radar or in any other signal processing uh, thing it revolves around measuring the amplitude frequency and phase so these are the basic signal characteristics and we have discussed it a lot of time okay so here when we are discussing about signals in radar it it is important that we understand what type of signals we deal with when it comes to radar system only then when we understand the nature of those signals we can treat them in a desired way and our interest is to extract the maximum amount of information from the echo signal from the target so in radar systems we deal with several kinds of signals first the most important which is the echo signal okay the signal which is re-radiated from the target our desired target the main object which we want to study that is the echo signal second is echo signals from undesired targets undesired objects surrounding objects for example if we want to let's say study the nature of an approaching vehicle okay in a dense forest let's say it is approaching then we will get the echo signal from that vehicle which strikes uh, which returns back after stri striking that vehicle but we will also get some other echo signals which uh, 
upon striking the nearby let's say mountains or forests trees uh, any other uh, animals so we will also get other echo signals which we don't want we are interested in the echo signal from that vehicle similarly if in a city we are trying to uh, uh, we are tracking a particular vehicle with the help of radar then also we will get several other echo signals from other vehicles or nearby buildings or any other structures bridges uh, poles whatever there is we will also deal with we have to deal with the other undesired echo signals so they are called as clutter okay this is the echo signal of interest and the other echo signals from undesired targets surrounding objects is called as clutter then we have the signals which are produced within the radar system the unwanted undesirable noise and interference spillover signals fourth signals transmitted by hostile sources with the intent of interfering with the target echo signals which is particularly seen in uh, military cases where the enemy uh, tries to hamper uh, the communication by deliberately transmitting interfering jamming signals okay then fifth is the signals which is generated by the friendly sources but they also interfere with the target echo signal so these are the several kinds of signal which we deal with in radar system but our primary interest is this first echo signal from the target this is the main signal which we want the echo signal from the target and all the other signals we we have to treat them in a particular suitable way that they do not suppress the original signal of interest next important concept here is the phaser representation of signal now most of the time when we when we uh, use the sinusoidal representation which is the commonly used representation to you know represent signals and its various parameters such as amplitude frequency and phase sometimes it is difficult to uh, visualize or to get the exact uh, idea about the various signal parameters such as amplitude frequency phase a lot of other things when there are one or two signals it is okay but when there are multiple signals it is very difficult to actually pinpoint the various signal parameters so for that the phaser representation of signal is used where the signal is represented by a vector where the length of the phaser it represents the amplitude of the signal and the angle of orientation it represents the phase okay so a particular convention which is used in terms of phase phase shift and amplitude is by this suppose we have a sinusoidal signal it has zero degree phase shift it is represented by this vector okay this vector next we have a sinusoidal signal with 90 degree phase shift this vector is pointing upwards this phaser representation this is for 90 degree phase shift then when 180 degree phase shift this vector is in the opposite direction to that of zero degree okay complete 180 degree movement in anti-clockwise direction next we have 270 degree which is the opposite to that of 90 degree okay so as you can see as we are moving from 0 to 360 degree this phasor vector it is moving in anti-clockwise direction suppose we have a phase shift in between 0 and 90 it will be a vector which will be pointing in this direction okay so it will be a vector like this suppose we have uh, any angle in between 0 and 90 degree it will be a vector in this direction okay similarly if we have any uh, phase in between let's say uh, 90 and 
180 degree it will be in this direction okay similarly if we have any uh, phase in between let's say uh, 180 and 270 it will be in this direction and any angle in between 270 and 360 it will be in this direction okay so like that so this is the particular convention which is used for the phasor representation of signal and so when we represent signals in the form of phasors it is very difficult uh, it is very easy sorry it is very easy to pinpoint the various parameters important parameters associated with signal now as we uh, have already discussed that the signals that we encounter in radar system it consists of a combination of several signals along with the original echo signal of interest so this is called as a composite signal okay so the signals in radar consisting of multiple signals it is called as a composite signal so the main desired component is the target echo so when uh, we are talking about composite signal we have to extract the original echo signal from that so whenever we get a, a signal in display when we see a signal in display it will be a combination of the multiple signals let's say we have the target echo signal of interest it is represented by this vector and the interfering clutter signal and all of this is represented by this vector so the signal vector which we will see on display it will look something like this the combination of the target and the echo signal this is the target this is the uh, interfering clutter signal or anything so the combination of these two this we will see on the display and we have to extract the original target signal of interest the echo signal of interest okay so it is our job to resolve it into its various components and get the original target signal of interest it is this signal which we want it is this signal this target echo signal which we want okay we are interested in this target signal okay so this is the job of this signal processing circuitry to extract the original target signal similarly suppose we have a target signal echo signal in this form and the interfering or clutter signal in this form so what we will see on display is actually this the combination of this uh, two vectors the resultant vector which is the composite signal and it is our job to get the target signal this target signal which we want okay so this target signal which we want and it is the job of the signal processing circuitry to extract this target echo signal from the composite signal from the composite signal we want to get this target signal so an important parameter which is uh, used to judge the efficiency of the signal processing circuitry which is uh, used in radar or any other signal processing systems is the signal to interference ratio so it is some sometimes called signal to noise ratio also signal to clutter ratio is also sometimes it is called so the signal to interference ratio uh, the main goal of signal processing is to improve this signal to interference ratio so the higher the signal to efficiency uh, interference ratio the higher is this signal processing efficiency okay so the signal to interference ratio is basically the ratio between the echo signal and the interfering signal okay the echo signal which is of interest to us and all the other signals which are not required which are undesirable that is the interfering signals so when the signal to interference ratio is higher it means the amount of echo signal is higher that is what we want so the signal to interference ratio is given uh, represented by the power of the target echo comp component and the power of the interfering component 
okay the power of the received echo component and the power of the interfering component so the higher the power of the echo signal the received echo signal the greater the efficiency of the signal processing circuitry and uh, the signal processing efficiency uh, is uh, sometimes represented by process gain where the effectiveness of the signal processing in separating the interference is judged so it is given by the process gain parameter the signal to interference ratio at the output divided by the signal to interference ratio at the input for example suppose we have a system signal processing block we give the input the signal so the signal to interference ratio at the input it is measured and then again the signal to interference ratio at the output it is measured so it is desired that the output the signal to interference ratio will be higher the interference component will be reduced so as a result of that this ratio will be increased as compared to that at the input so when it is higher at the output it means the amount of echo signal it is more and the interference component is reduced as compared to it so when the interference component reduces that is the denominator decreases when the denominator is small then automatically the ratio value increases so that is the process gain sometimes it is represented in terms of clutter instead of interference clutter is given so it is called as improvement factor in that case in terms of clutter so that is given by the signal to clutter ratio at the output divided by the signal to clutter clutter ratio at the input so the same thing instead of interference here we have clutter okay so these are the various ways in which the efficiency of the signal processing is judged in terms of process gain which involves signal to interference ratio at both the input and the output and improvement factor which is also called as mti or i uh, which uh, is basically is the signal to clutter ratio at both the output and the input so in both the cases we want the signal to clutter or interference ratio at the output to be higher as compared to the input it means the clutter is reduced and the interference is reduced and the ratio value increases so this is uh, some of the basic concepts related to signal processing related to radar systems it is just very small amount which we have discussed there is a lot to it radar signal processing is a separate subject in itself and there are a lot of things to it so we'll discuss them uh, so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much